Ever since Apple announced its silicon transition, I've been wondering how they're going to manage to compete with the top CPUs and GPUs that are found in the Mac Pro. Graphics performance in the M1 is really impressive for what it is, but it doesn't come close to competing with the best from AMD and Nvidia for raw compute performance. If rumours are to be believed, Apple will be introducing an M1X chip with double the graphics performance or perhaps even more, and that's great news for laptops but is still not going to cut it in a Mac Pro. So, will Apple make discrete GPUs? Here's what Apple Silicon is up against. Take a look at the GPU options currently available on the Mac Pro. The entry-level Radeon Pro 580X would be pretty easy to surpass with Apple Silicon, assuming that Apple can double the current M1 graphics performance. And the same thing is probably true of this W5500X. Now, if Apple could treble the performance of the M1, then they would be within fighting distance of the W5700X. And so it's possible that the M chips could be at that level, I guess. but. As we carry on down the list, the performance gap becomes ever larger. You can have two of those W5700X cards, each with 16 gigabytes of dedicated video RAM. But let's focus in on the 6000 series graphics options, and we'll pop them onto a chart with the Geekbench 5 Metal Score. Now, Geekbench 5's Metal Benchmark tests the cards in a number of ways, specifically using Apple's Metal Framework, to give us an overall idea of the raw performance of the card. But of course, this synthetic score won't always translate to real-world tasks, and we will talk about that in a moment, uh, but it's fine for our purposes here. So first we have the W6800X with 32GB of GDDR6 RAM, and this apparently scores around 150,000. But you can have two of those cards in your Mac Pro, so for the sake of this argument we'll double that score to 300,000 for that option. Obviously, we know that real-world performance will depend on how optimised your app is for dual GPU usage. Then there's the W6900X, again with 32 gigs of RAM, and that scores apparently about 169,000. And again, you can have two of them in your Mac Pro. Apple then also offers the W6800X Duo. This is two of the 6800X GPUs on a single card, with 64 gigs of total RAM. And as I understand it, this still operates as two GPUs. Teresa at Morganaut Media on YouTube has been testing this specific card, and she found that it's got a tendency to overheat and throttle. When she tested in Geekbench 5, she got a score of 152,000. Bear in mind that Geekbench will only test one of the GPUs at a time, so we can effectively double that score. Uh, the scores on these cards, though, it does seem are quite variable as there will always be differences in the quality of the fabricated chips, so you'll find that some people are reporting lower scores and some higher. And finally, you can put two of those W6800X Duo cards in the Mac Pro for a total of four GPUs, and that gives us a total combined raw compute performance score of about 600,000. Now just for comparison, let's pop the M1 onto the chart, and you can see that even if we double the performance, or quadruple the performance, we're still nowhere near these AMD options. So could Apple ever get to that level of performance with a system on chip design like the M1? It is a good design for general purpose computing. The GPU sits on the same die as the CPU and it shares the RAM, something Apple calls unified memory. It's a great system which delivers solid graphics performance for notebooks and lightweight desktops. So is it the case that we just need to make the chip bigger, add more cores and more memory? Well, unfortunately, it's not quite as simple as that in the real world to scale performance. We'd need to add more RAM, obviously, but there would also need to be changes to the design to facilitate access to that RAM. And there's also some physical constraints to consider. The M1 die is about 120 square millimetres in size, uh, which is pretty small for a computer chip. And the GPU, as you can see from this diagram, takes up somewhere around a quarter of that physical space. By comparison, the W6800X has a die size of about 520 square millimetres, all of it devoted to GPU. A bigger chip with more cores will generate more heat. Apple is very focused, of course, on thin and light designs with minimal cooling and long battery life when it comes to its laptops, and it's very focused on minimal power consumption. In fact, the M1 at full throttle consumes less power than some of these graphics cards do when they're idle. So putting a, a huge chip like this into a laptop seems really quite unlikely, 
but in a large desktop like the Mac Pro, well, it makes quite a lot of sense. The cooling capacity of the current Mac Pro chassis is plenty enough to deal with this, uh, but it would rather defeat the purpose of a modular, user-upgradable workstation if everything is all contained on one chip. And I guess at this point, we need to assume that Apple will continue making a modular professional desktop. I think they need to. Uh, professionals buy the Mac Pro because they want that modularity and upgradability. Video editors want to be able to change graphics cards, make use of specific accelerators like Apple's Afterburner card, or cards from companies like RED. And music professionals, well, they need PCI Express slots for audio controller cards. There are many professionals also who need the additional features of workstation-grade Xeon CPUs and error-checking RAM, as something the current Apple Silicon doesn't support. And so that's why they'll pay the heavy asking price, because they know that they're buying a machine that's going to last for many years and will deliver a return on their investment. Or at least they did before Apple unsettled everyone with the move away from Intel. And of course, it's possible that Apple could pull the plug. Mac Pro sales make up a tiny percentage of Apple's revenue. I don't personally think that they're going to drop this machine though. I think instead they could use it as an opportunity to flex and show their competitors what they can do. The current Mac Pro allows you to change CPU, RAM, SSDs and graphics cards. So how would Apple approach that with its own silicon? At the moment the M chips have everything on board, including the RAM. And their developer APIs are all geared up for that unified memory access. And in the case of graphics, tile-based deferred rendering, uh, which is not the way AMD cards work. Of course, Apple could produce a separate line of professional M chips, or maybe P chips, uh, which don't have GPU or RAM on board. But I'm not convinced that would happen because it takes the concept too far away from the optimizations which make the M chips so special. And that is a key point. Traditional x86 workstations are powerful beasts and they're often over spec for some of the work that they do. Uh, you're paying for a huge amount of performance and perhaps you don't need all of it all the time for your workflow. It's a bit like having a really large excavator. If you want to move a massive amount of earth, it's going to be much quicker than a mini digger. Uh, but what if you need to dig a specifically small sized trench? Now sure, you could put a smaller bucket on that big machine, but the truth is that the mini digger may be able to do the job just as well. This sort of computing is all about these type of compromises. You need the massive performance for some tasks, but not for others. And we've got lots of professionals with very different workflows who are all buying the same hardware, but using it in different ways. Now, what if Apple took a different approach? Suppose Apple did make a professional chip, which does also have an amount of unified memory and a GPU on board. Is there any reason why the system couldn't still have additional RAM sockets for expansion? It's a nice idea that when the unified memory is full, it could make use of that additional system memory, even if the speed was a little slower. Uh, the M1 is very good at moving memory around. It likes to swap memory to the SSD. What about if it instead used that additional RAM as swap space? Moving data around the various memory banks to optimize performance, well, that would make for a formidable system. And the onboard GPU could be sufficient for display driving tasks, and some professionals, well, they may not need graphics performance at all. Uh, for example, music professionals. Uh, so long as the onboard GPU can handle multiple displays, they could buy a Mac Pro that doesn't even have a dedicated graphics card. Of course, Apple could also make a large dedicated GPU with its own video RAM. Without the constraints of the system on chip design, could they produce cards which are able to compete with these heavyweight offerings from AMD? Well, they have the engineers, they have the competence to do it, but I'm wondering if that's actually what's needed here. Often these super powerful graphics cards are being used for very specific compute tasks, or they're being used to handle encoding and decoding of video codecs. And many of these disciplines don't utilize the full capability of the graphics card. So could Apple instead make cards for specific disciplines? Perhaps an enhanced AI card full of machine learning cores, or more cards like the Afterburner for different video codecs. After all, the M1 has already shown how optimized encoder and decoder chips can make a huge difference in performance. And that's why your basic M1 can do such a good job with HEVC video codecs, even outperforming some of these AMD cards that we've mentioned. Apple could make a whole variety of cards for different disciplines like 3D model rendering, 
or anything else you can think of. The combination of well-optimized hardware and software is absolutely Apple's approach to computing. And if they do follow that approach, well, it's likely that they could provide hardware which is perfectly optimized for very specific workloads. And whilst that wouldn't appeal to consumers, I can see professionals going for that. Why not take this opportunity to change the approach and change the way that we think about computing hardware? Arguably, M1 has already started down that path. And it's exciting to see how Apple might attack the problem. I really hope that they do shift that professional computing paradigm with a fresh approach. Can Apple build dedicated GPUs which could compete with the best from AMD and Nvidia? I'm sure they could, in time. Will they? Well, I think it's probably better to ask the question, do they need to build dedicated GPUs to compete with AMD and Nvidia? As a professional, would you care what hardware is under the hood so long as it reliably and quickly does the job that you need it to do? What do you think? Will Apple build dedicated graphics chips? Will there still be a Mac Pro as we know it in the Apple Silicon era? And will Apple get all of this done within that two year transition window? Please share your thoughts in the comments section. And as always, thanks for all your subs, your likes and your shares. I'll see you soon for some more geekery.